from the TWU Local 591 Union Hall. It's the Local 591 podcast with local president Gary Scheibel. Join Gary and his guests as they discuss topics that impact and affect the careers and lives of union members. Take it away, Gary. Hi, thanks, Tommy, for the introduction, and uh, welcome back to the podcast. Today's subject is on the association. In the studio with me today is uh, Local 514 President Dale Danker and Local 567 President Raleigh Reeves. I want to welcome both to the podcast. Thank you for doing this podcast with me, brothers. Glad to be here, Gary. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much. So I want to take us back to the TW International Convention back in September and a letter that we collaborated on and both read and spoke to on the convention floor. As many of our members know, we stood up at the TW International Convention and demanded the removal of the IAM from the association. Removal of the IAM versus dissolving the association because we also need to protect some of the things that were written in the contract that are specifically tied to the words association. So why don't we get an update on where we are with the association since the convention? Well, Gary, we went to an IEC meeting down in Fort Lauderdale, Florida about, I don't know, it seems like it's going on three, four weeks now. And I would think that maybe the best word that I could use to describe what it's like trying to get things accomplished in the association with the IAM being tied together is probably the word hindrance. It's a hindrance to try to get grievances resolved. It's a hindrance trying to get to arbitration. It's a hindrance trying to get bids accomplished. It takes twice or maybe even more time just to try to get answers for things. So it's just been a hindrance. It's the best way to describe it. That would be a good word, really a a hindrance on representing our members. I look at it as it's more of, from my experience, it's become a rather dysfunctional family with the forced marriage. And we hear that continuing not just from our members, but the vast majority of IAM members, and they speak all the time about their desire to join the TWU. Yeah, I feel the same. I mean, mainly due to the vast differences of the level of representation is what drives that within the organizations. The TWU is clearly a much better organization, and we actually hear that from IAM members. That we do. So going back to the convention, what we did on the convention floor, what we read, was really speaking on behalf of our members. It was loud and clear from our members, going back to never getting a vote on this association, but also from the IAM members. And the IAM responded both on the letter and us speaking on the convention floor with an outburst and a childish letter of their own, where they specifically attacked both of you at the Allen Rally. And to me, it appears they missed the entire point of what the membership is screaming with, at the time, the Amphidrive. And that is they want to vote, just as they wanted to vote years ago before Jim Little took away the vote that we were promised. Yeah, it appeared to me the IAM was unable to respond with facts to our letter that would support their position. So instead, they chose to reduce themselves to personal attacks, which I believe just proves our point. Yeah, I believe if you look at the letter, it has a gentleman's name on it that's no longer with the IAM. So I just don't believe any response is needed. We, we tried to listen to our membership and do what they wanted. They wanted to vote. And then when we tried to serve our membership, they come out and personally attacked us. So it was just business, and they took it personal. Yeah, and I would just you know add to that, to both of your points. It, it wasn't worthy of a response then, and honestly, it's not worthy of a response now. When I look at what's going on with the IAM this past year, they're in turmoil. And one of the questions we actually frequently hear from the IAM members is about their recent IAM 142 trusteeship and really who is in charge of their local district right now. Yeah, I'm not going to get into their business. I've read the report and how there were suggestions of possible criminal activity, but that's for them to figure out. I can speak for our three locals. We run a very transparent organization and would never condone what they've done with their membership's money at District 142. But again, that's for their members to deal with. Yeah, our our position is for our membership, the demand is for a single union. We wanted a vote. We've never been given a vote. But, um, you know, we need to figure out where we're going to be at for next negotiations going forward. Clearly, we need to be negotiating uh, from a position of strength, and strength is being on the same page, and that is being in a single organization. That said, where are we at with the request made to the TW International and really supported by the entire TW convention body with the international discussions? I do recall when we were standing up there, we got quite the standing ovation on taking a stand against the IAM. Well, when we was down in Fort Lauderdale three or four weeks ago, John, our international president, he opened up after the meetings were over and just had an open discussion on the floor. And that's the first question that I asked, hey, where are we at with this? And his response was, 
I can't go into the details, but there are things going on behind the scenes that would be in the direction that um, that you guys gave me off the floor. So he kind of responded that there are things that are happening, but he would not go into the details of it. Yeah, and I know, speaking to some of our leadership, I do know they asked the IAM flat out, the the IAM international president, uh, to let's just hold a vote. And they declined the offer to just hold a vote in the membership. Yeah. You know, John has told me time and time again, Dale, Harry Lombardo took over from Jim Little. We've asked this question time and time again, like you're saying, and can we get out of it? Uh, We can't even get out of it with like a bad divorce. We cannot seem to even divorce our way out of it. So I'm hopeful that we can, you know, continue to uh, bring pressure to make this thing happen. We need to get away from it. Yeah, Dale, that'd be correct. I mean, per discussions that we've had with TW leadership, with uh, lawyers, And the way the letter was written and signed by Jim Little, you are correct. That being said, conversations are still ongoing. Yeah, and I think with those conversations, they need some ammunition. When we put our three locals together, I do believe we can give them the ammo that uh, they need because, honestly, the fact is we all want to vote. Well, up in Tulsa, we have about 150, maybe to 200 IM members, and uh, it's constant that they want to get out of the IM into the TWU they say just on a local level, just what we see, you guys have representation. We have no representation. We can't get anybody to give us information. So they clearly want some leadership on their side as well. Yes, Dale. That being said, we will be circulating authorization cards to demand that the AFL-CIO call for an internal election with any craft and class that submits more than 50% of authorization cards. Yeah, and that said, Raleigh, let me let me read the card because this is not a request of the NMB. We're not actually asking the NMB to get engaged at this point. The card is for internal to the AFL-CIO. And on the title of the card, as I'm going to read right now, it says, it's a request for internal AFL-CIO representation election for the employees covered under the TWIM Association and authorization to represent. And here's the verbiage on the card. It's going to look much like any union authorization card with your name, address, and information, but the actual verbiage is this. With this authorization card, I am calling on the AFL-CIO, the International Association of Machinists and Aerospace Workers, AFL-CIO, and the Transport Workers Union of America, AFL-CIO, to conduct an internal representation election using an independent third-party election service among the eligible employees working for American Airlines in my craft or class to decide which union currently under the TWIM Association will represent the respective craft or class as the sole surviving entity of the association. Association. I authorize the winner of said internal representation election between the Transport Workers Union of America, AFL-CIO, and the International Association of Machinists and Aerospace Workers, AFL-CIO, to represent me in all current representation aspects, as well as future negotiations of wages, hours, and working conditions with American Airlines as the sole surviving entity within the TWIM Association. Furthermore, I authorize the removal of the defeated union from the TWIM Association Constitution, bylaws, and all other related policies and or documents. This action will not harm any collective bargaining and or representation purpose or authority and solely remove one union from any future association activities. That said, obviously, we'll be asking our members to vote TWU. That'll be an easy ask, I believe, where I'm from up in Tulsa. Right, and all IAM members, we encourage you to vote for the TWU as well. We'll be passing out the cards for the members to sign, demanding an internal election, and the demand will be made to all parties involved. The AFL-CIO, the IM, and the TWU. We're going to put it at their doorsteps. And I'm sure one of the things we're going to hear is, you know, why not AMFA? You know, I'll speak to this first. I, I have no issue with saying that Local 591 is much stronger than the separate locals that we were in, which would be what we would be in if we were under AMFA. And we got much more money to fight the battles, and we've proven it. We've, we've proven that we're stronger and we're willing to fight. Well, in my time as president, I started at the tail end a little, went to Harry, and now we have John Samuelson. And John, by far, has shown greater leadership and stronger leadership than I've had in my whole career. Yeah, to add to that, Dale, 
we have experienced firsthand local 514, 567, and 591 are stronger, far stronger, uh, far more aggressive, provide far more benefits to our membership, both in contract enforcement as well as providing tangible benefits. I mean, handing out T-shirts, uh, hoodies, backpacks, tools, and, and we hear it all the time on the floor, IM doesn't receive that kind of representation. No, they don't. The one question I know I'm going to hear, because I've already heard it passed, is if the TW wins, um, will the IM uh, immediately lose their medical? Well, that's always a sore subject, but no, it's in the contract book. We're not calling for a dismantling of the association, so we've already tried that. And so now we're just saying there should be one union representing this thing called the association structure going forward, and the surviving union essentially would own 100% of the uh, responsibilities moving forward. They would maintain their medical. I mean, we'd ultimately like to go to their medical, but they would hold what they have until we got to the next set of negotiations, and then it would all be back on the table again. Yeah, I agree, Dale. All provisions within this current JCBA would be preserved, including the existing IAM medical, which is scheduled to sunset at the amendable date of this JCBA. So same type of question, but about the IAM pension. As far as the pension goes, the IAM has numerous unions within the pension that are named after them. We would prefer that the members have a choice on whether to participate in that pension or have an option for the 401k defined contribution of 5%. And I've had IM members say they'd had, like to have the option as well. One of the questions that I also hear is, would this be a raid under the AFL-CIO? Um, I'll take that one. So no is the clear answer. Absolutely no. Simply calling on the AFL-CIO to provide the same guidance it did previously to provide two AFL-CIO union memberships who are forced into a non-AFL-CIO affiliate holding company. I also hear this question too of, will I get in trouble for signing the card? And I just want to, I'll just take that. It's, I mean, the, the answer is no. Despite any kind of fear tactic that you might have or might be approached by, you have rights in this country and uh, signing an authorization card is one of them. So one thing I know we're going to hear is where will the cards go? Well, we plan to deliver them to AFL-CIO President Liz Schuler. You know, the late, great Richard Trumka sent a letter that said, play nice in the sandbox, and uh, it's uh, not going so well. So it's time that we just continue to turn the pressure up and uh, present this to Miss Schuler and see what she has to say about it. If we do get cards, I guess the big question is, will they listen? Oh, I, I believe they'll listen for sure because we're going to drop about 10,000 cards on their desk. Yes, strength in numbers is the key here. We're going to be faced with a continued AMPA raid if they don't get us out of this mess. Absolutely, and I, I think it's time this membership make their voices heard. I know we kind of covered this, but just want to make sure there's no confusion out there. Can the IAM sign these cards? Because obviously we're coming from a TWU president's perspective and a TWU podcast, so can the IAM sign these cards? Oh, yes, uh, absolutely. They can sign as IM members, and uh, we encourage the IM members to sign. All association members will have the opportunity to sign a card. Okay, and then one thing that's going to be a question I'll be raised is why now? Well, we started on the convention floor, and this is, this is just the next step. We have got to deliver something for John to have as much leverage as possible. We weren't going to do it in negotiations. You know, we were 17 years on a bankruptcy contract, so... And John being, obviously, President John Samuelson. I mean, the other thing we got to look at, we, we were dealing with an AMPA drive and a AMPA filing that left us no choice to a, attempt to work under the association. Uh, ultimately, the answer is no to being able to work under the association, and we believe AMPA is not the solution. Yeah, in reality, the why now is there's a demand by all of the members for a vote, a vote that we were promised by Jim Little. And honestly, I feel like it was stolen from us. So membership deserves a vote. And uh, that's, that's why now for us. And is this just for mechanics and related or can stores sign? Uh, no, S stores, absolutely. All work groups in their craft and class can sign and demand a vote for their respective class and class, m and R and as well as MLS. Absolutely. Okay, and I know we've gone to pretty deep detail on this so far, but there might still be a little bit of confusion, so maybe we can break it down further with what we're really seeking to do here. Maybe the best way to think of it is it's an internal reorganization based upon the demand of the affected membership. It's something that we didn't go looking for, you know, if you want to call it a fight. We didn't go looking for a fight, but after trying to 
make this thing work. That continues to be clear to the three of us here that a change has to be made. We need to get this thing fixed before we sit down with Robert Isom at the next negotiations. Yeah, Dale, I, I agree. And our organizations are simply too different. And your presidents and these three TWU locals have come together to ask for your help, uh, not only the TWU members, but for all association to finally put to rest this lingering question. And we will provide details at each station as to who to turn these cards back in. But ultimately, the members deserve what they were promised, and the lack of representation by the IM has proven this to be a necessity. Before I end, is there anything else, Dale, or you guys want to comment on? The three locals that we have currently in the MNR group work together incredibly well. I've got 34 years, and it's the best that that's ever been. So uh, I'm looking forward to working together with you guys and trying to get this accomplished. And I just add, Raleigh, that I'm not sitting here making this podcast, making a personal attack against any I am officer, official, or member. I've watched it up close and personal. This association hinders their ability to represent their members the old way that they do things, and it hinders our ability to represent our membership. Guys and gals on the floor, they're paying union dues. They deserve the best representation possible. This togetherness of these two unions and their different way of handling their business cannot provide that. Those that are listening, we'll, we'll see you out on the floor. We'll be asking for you to sign a card and, and let us turn them in to Ms. Schuler and see if we can't get this thing to go forward to a vote. Well, you make a great point. This is definitely not personal against those that are in a representational role at the IM. And actually, some will make fantastic reps under the TWU when we are represented on the one union. So that's our podcast for today. Um, I do want to say thank you to President Stanker and Reeves for coming into the studio today to do this. Um, greatly appreciate you coming in here and doing this very important podcast. Thank you, Gary. Thank you very much for having us, Gary. The sooner we can get the card signed, the sooner we can demand our vote. And when we do, I ask that we vote TWU. As always, thank you for listening to this podcast and all of our podcasts. I do speak for Dale and Raleigh and ask you for getting us as much help as possible when the cards are on the floor. Thanks again, and please stay safe. For more information about TWU Local 591, go to local591.com comment on this or any of our podcasts, email us at info at local591.com. You can listen, download, and stream episodes of Local 591 Podcast on iTunes, Google Podcasts, your favorite Android podcaster, or your RSS feed-enabled browser. Local 591 Podcast episodes are also available to stream and download from our website, local591podcast.com forward slash podcast. Music provided under license by pond5.com. The Local 591 Podcast is produced and engineered by Tommy Ingle.